I'm Adam. And I'm Bubbles. And this is Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. Hey, Bubbles, I know that you love bird watching. What's your favorite thing about it? Good day, Adam. Well, mate, it's the way those birds flap about like they are having a dance off in the sky. What about you, teach? What's the funniest thing that happened in class this week? Let me tell you. One of the kids tried to convince the class that unicorns are real and they roam around the playground at night. I almost had to call for a unicorn assembly. Crikey. That sounds like a magical adventure. Did they have any proof? Yep. They showed us a drawing that looked like a cross between a horse and a rainbow. Convincing evidence, right? Absolutely, mate. I'd join that unicorn search party any day. But you know, those kids might just have a better imagination than us adults. No, about, no doubt about that. In today's book, MJ is more than ready for her first day of kindergarten. With her hair freshly braided and her mom's special tiara on her head, she knows she's going to rock kindergarten. Let's get started. The Queen of Kindergarten by Derek Barnes, illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Newton. Yay, yay, it's time for school. MJ, MJ, going to school. That's my little three-year-old brother, Samson, waking me up with the song. He's so sweet. After I wash up, I put on my first day of school outfit. And when I'm dressed, I stand there looking at myself in the mirror, just because I can. Mama washed and braided my hair last night, and it looks so good. But she always helps me look nice. Yes, she does. MJ, girl, did you just step off the cover of a magazine? Mama says. Then she tells me I'm only missing one thing, and she places a sparkly tiara on my head. I wore this on my first day of school, she says. But today, you will become the queen of kindergarten. What does the queen of kindergarten do, mama? I ask. First, us queens brighten up every room we enter. Second, us queens are caring and kind. And third, the good ones are always helpful to others, she says. I have a good memory, and I'm going to remember all of this. I sure will. One, two, three. Then daddy says in his deepest voice, the royal chariot awaits your highness. That means he's ready to take me to school in his pickup truck. I kiss mama on each cheek and we bow to each other. You know, queen stuff. How did you get ready for school? Well, mate, it starts with a trunk load of breakfast. Munching on some eucalyptus leaves gets me energized for the day. I stick to cereal, but I bet that eucalyptus gives you a kick. Do you have any special elephant school supplies? Not really, but I do have this fancy backpack. Holds a ton, literally. What about you, Adam? Any teacher tricks to kick off the day? My secret weapon? A big glass of water, and maybe a few silly jokes to start the class with a laugh. Water? You don't drink coffee? No, I've never really been a fan. On the rare occasion that I have it, I get super jittery. How do you wrangle all those kiddos? Patience and a bit of creativity. Sometimes I feel like I need your memory, though. Remembering all those student names can be a bit challenging. True that. My memory is legendary. I'll trade you memory skills for your whiteboard handwriting any day. Deal. If only we could swap skills. Imagine me trumpeting and you teaching science. At school, I let Daddy hold my hand and walk me up to the door. Poor Daddy, he doesn't want to leave. He gives me a big hug, one last look, and then he's gone. Welcome everyone, says our teacher, Ms. Lovin' Good. Please look for your name card on the desk. That'll be your new home. I look left, I look right, and there it is, MJ Malone. I decorate my name card with drawings of my four favorite things. Dolphins, comets, skyscrapers, and my piggy bank. 
I get excited when Ms. Lovingood says, everyone will have their very own task for the entire week. I know right away which one I want, window monitor. It'll be my job to open up the blinds and let the sunlight in the room every morning. Doesn't that sound good? Plus, brightening up a room is the very first thing that mama said us queens do, so I sure will. But Raina, the girl sitting next to me, has her head hung low, looking sad. I want to go home. Right away, I remember Mama saying that us queens are caring and kind. So I reach for Raina's hand. She grabs mine, squeezes, and then gives me a smile. That makes me feel real good too, you know? Ms. Lovingood calls on me to pick out a book for the classroom read and I find one about a boy getting a royal haircut. Later, I help Leo put away the blocks. Helping is another queenly thing. One, two, three, four. I heard you had quite the adventure trying something new. Oh, mate, you won't believe it. I was as nervous as a kangaroo in a crocodile swamp. What happened? I started this thing called painting. I was flapping my ears like crazy, thinking, can an elephant really be an artist? I remember the first time I had to teach the kids about fractions. I was sweating like a wallaby in the desert. You don't have to turn your expressions Australian for me. Fractions, eh? That sounds tricky. But painting, mate. I was dipping my trunk into colors and splashing paint everywhere. Thought I'd turn the whole place into a rainbow. Well, that's awesome. I bet it was quite the masterpiece. Oh, it was a sight to behold, mate. For lunch, I have leftover spaghetti, and guess what? Raina does too. My mama says there's nothing wrong with leftovers. Yum. I promise to bring Leo some next time, because sharing is my jam. At recess, Ms. Lovingood teaches us how to double dutch. Me and a girl named Regina twirl the ropes like twin tornadoes, but it doesn't matter. Ms. Lovingood has lightning in her shoes. We've never seen a grow-up's feet move so quick. When we go back inside, we head to the art room. I make the cutest picture of Samson. Then we go to the music room, and I hit a few high notes for everybody. And I sure do love gym time, too. Did I tell you how good I am at soccer? Don't let the tiara fool ya. Before it's time to go home, we all sit on the classroom rug that looks like the planet Earth. We munch, crunch, and nibble on delicious apple slices and sandwich cookies with strawberry filling. Ms. Lovingood plays soft jazz music like Mama does sometimes. She calls it wind down time, and it's a perfect way to end the day. Back home, I sure brighten Samson's day when I give him the picture I made for him, and he plants a sloppy kiss on my cheek. That boy. At bedtime, I tell Mama, I did all the nice queen things you listed. You did? That means you get to keep that tiara. Wear it proudly, baby. I sure will, Mama. I sure will. MJ, the queen of kindergarten, that's me. This one day, the kids surprised me with an impromptu play they put together. They were learning about historical figures, and each one of them portrayed someone famous. We had pint-sized Shakespeare's, mini Marie Curie's. It was hilarious and educational all at once. This one time, a friend gave me this cool new puzzle feeder. It was like a giant food-filled Rubik's Cube. I had a whale of a time figuring that thing out. Smashed it in record time, I did. My son would love that. I can picture you, trunk deep in a puzzling situation, but hey, solving that feeder sounds like a big achievement. It sure was. By the way, I'd pay peanuts to see your kiddos performing a historical mashup. They'd surely put a smile on my face. If this video has put a smile on your face, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm Adam. And I'm Bubbles. And this is Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. Did you know... The first kindergarten in the United States was founded in Watertown, Wisconsin in 1856 by Marguerite Schertz.